maybe about uh, 12 hours and 15 minutes or so away from a new year. And I want to take this opportunity to share with you a word from the Lord today. And I want you to take this message very seriously on today. It's a message that's about to give an opportunity to those of you who are probably feeling at this time that this year was not a good year. Let me just ask you if you would raise your hand. How many of you can truly say that this year is not ending on a high note for you? Just raise your hand. Let me see. In other words, it's, this is, it's not going well. This year is not ending well. Amen. It's not been a good year. Let me see your hand. Because I must be way off. Because the Lord showed me that there are a number of people. Would you stand? If you, will, if you can say, or if you're one who will say, you know what, Pastor, truth be told, this has not been a good year for me. It's not ending the way I anticipated. Won't you stand to your feet and let me see. Won't you stand to your feet. Amen. Had one sister told me this morning, Pastor, it's been a rough year. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I know uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm on point with this message. Uh how many of you can stand and say this has been a good year? Let me see. Won't you stand? I want you to stand. Don't just wave now. This has been a good year. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm sure now we had a number of people to stand saying... This year has, is ending up well for me. That some of you would probably say, well, you know what, Pastor? I'm alive. And so that's all right for me. Come on, is, is that you? Yeah, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Amen. And then there are those who will probably be saying, you know, this year I, my finances uh, were better than it was last year. Come on. Do we have anyone here who would say that? Uh, we have one brother. Amen. Come on now. Come on. Truth be told, you know, when your finances are not good, you know, you know how that is. But yeah, my finances are better. And some of you, how many of you are saying, this is a good year for me because I, I, I got a job. Amen. I, I was able to get a new job this year. Let, Stan, let me see. Stan, let me see. You got a new job this year. Okay. We have a couple. Yep, yep. And so it's a good year. Yes, it's a good year. You know, and, 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 and many of you have reasons for saying, you know, this year has been a good year. It's ending up on the bright side for me. Amen. Uh, do we have anyone here who got married this year? Uh-huh. Yes. Now, now I know why he had his hand up. The year is ending very well. I, I'm no longer lonely. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, how many of you... You know, it's a great year. I, 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 I started my own business. Do we have anyone here? You started a business this year? Anyone? Uh, stand up because I know. Won't you stand? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You see, I'm trying to bring to your attention a lot of reasons why. So many of you may be saying, this year has ended up quite well. Amen. 
Do we have any graduates here? Anyone graduated college this year? Do we have anyone who graduated college this year? Oh, yeah, we have a college graduate. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's Elizabeth Madamidola. Elizabeth is as old as this church. Not that she's old. She's only as old as the church because the church is young. Amen. Praise God. But I remember when her dad asked me to come and to pronounce her name because it's, it's custom in the Nigerian culture. The pastor announced the name of the child. And I remember Elizabeth announcing your name. Amen. And here she is graduating college. And I think she's going off. Huh? You in grad school. Right. Yes. Yes, she's in grad school. Yes. She just told me last week she's heading off to, um, to California for a new job. And we pray that God will go well with you. That God will be with you and God will guide you. And it will go well with you in California. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I don't mean to burst your bubble as to why or based on what you have said that 2023 is ending up well for you. The reason is, church, what makes the year end well is not contingent on what you achieved during this year. Are you with me? What makes a year end well? And we thank God for those of you who have achieved great things and started your own business and traveled. Amen. Finances went well. Your financial portfolio is looking better this year than last year. Thank God. Those of you who got a new job, you stood up. Amen. Things are looking up. But that's not what make the year end well, church. For Jesus put it this way. What shall it profit a man? Come on, help me somebody. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? There are those who got the job, church, but have lost their soul. They started a new business, but they have lost their soul. Their financial portfolio in 2023 was the best it had ever been, but their soul is lost, church. There are those who are alive, and some of you said, you know what, this year is ending well because I'm alive, but there are many who are alive, but they're lost. Oh, come on, church. Oh, come on, church. Bought the car, bought the house. But church, it's not ending up well for them. Praise the name of the Lord. What then makes a year end well? It's a question. That's where I want to take your mind on today. And church, when you discover what will make 2023 end well, I want you to know it's the same principles that will make your life end well. Are you with me? Because you can have the job, you can have the home, you can have the new relationship, you can be a new groom or a new bride. Are you with me? You can have the money in the bank, church. And yet your life may not end up well. So my theme today is entitled what will make 2023 end up well? 
Amen. Making your year end up well. And the fact that we are about 12 hours away from the new year. Each one of you have an opportunity to make 2023 end up well. Amen. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. Amen. And I pray if you're here today, you will not let 23 end up bad or sour for you. But you will use the time you have based on the principles I'm going to share with you today that makes one's life end up well to make sure that 2023 will end up well for you. So message is not going to take a long time, I promise you that. Because the principles are there in scripture, church. Amen. It's not based on what you have attained. in the world but it's what you have attained in the kingdom of heaven oh give the lord a hand clap i said give the lord a hand clap huh i need your help with this message on this morning praise god praise god praise god just want to share with you a little bit how, how this message really came about it came about i was i was i was flying back on the plane after spending some time with my mother-in-law down in Florida, and she's very sick. But I, I had the opportunity to see how or what's necessary for one's life to end up well. Amen. She's still alive. We're praying for her. God is still able to heal her. But she has ministered to me in her sick bed. Amen. As a family, we have, we have learned a lot from my mother-in-law. Strong woman of God. Some of you remembered, it was about uh, six weeks ago, when Pastor Sonia was being ordained as well as others. And my mother-in-law made the journey up from Florida in a wheelchair, a surprise trip. Pastor Sonia had no idea. Her mom and her sister made the trip to be here. My mother-in-law wanted to be at her daughter's ordination service and nothing was going to stop her. And here it is, six weeks later. She's in the hospital. In the past three weeks, she went to one hospital, then they discharged her to a rehab, and then shortly after, she ended back up in, in another hospital. Amen. But... While she's on her sick bed, church, she is singing the songs of praise and glory. Are you with me? She loves to sing. And I wish I could have recorded her and uh, Pastor Sonia. They, 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 they know the same songs. Amen. And there are times when my mother-in-law would say, no, I don't want to hear that song. I want to hear this song. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the... And the voice I hear calling on my ear. 
the voice of God is calling. And church, she is sick, very sick. And each time the doctors and the nurses walk in her room, all they're hearing is, Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, help me. Amen. Not one moment when she is experiencing pain, she asks for pain medicine. What she's doing is just singing the Lord's song. Amen. And she will quote some scriptures the whole time. Scriptures and singing and praising and glorifying God. Praise the name of the Lord. And when I thought about her, the message came to mind concerning what it will take to make the, this year end well. And if God add more years, what will it take to make 2024 and 2025 and the years that God will add to your life, God wants you to know what it really takes to make your year, or each year, end well. Are you with me? Because church, so many things. It's how much money they have at the end of the year. Are they in a relationship or not? Amen. For some who gave birth to a child, this is the, this, this is the best year. Are you with me? For some, they took a vacation, which was a vacation of a lifetime. For some, it's a promotion. Amen. But church, those things don't necessarily make one's life end well. Amen. What then makes a life end well? Well, as I thought about my mother-in-law, I also thought about the Apostle Paul. And that's where I want to go. Would you put Acts chapter 20, verse 22 through 24? So I'm not preaching hard today. I just want to give you uh, some principles, church, that will help you. You know, having attained everything in the world and not have your life end up well. Amen? In other words, not knowing where you're going if this heart stopped beating at this moment. Not knowing where you're going, church. What was it all about? Amen? So the Apostle Paul here was about to be brought to Jerusalem. Bound. Amen? He had to appear in Jerusalem. His life was threatened. There in Jerusalem, he knew what was awaiting him. Because he knew that to be an apostle, apostle of Jesus Christ, it meant that, in, that he would suffer. Amen. He knew the scriptures. Jesus says, in order to reign with me, you must be willing to do what? Suffer with me. His life, when you study the life of Apostle Paul, it was a life of suffering. This apostle suffered. Amen. 
hardships, shipwreck, persecution, trials, tribulation. He himself was sick. He said, I have a thorn in my side that Satan used to buffet me. Amen? A thorn in his side brought on by Satan. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. And so he went through. I kind of compared him to my mother-in-law who is going through and has gone through so much in her life. But let me tell you, I'm not here to preach her, but this is a woman of God, a woman of faith. Amen. A woman who came from Jamaica to these United States of America to do domestic work. And she came and brought her children, her siblings, and their children. She has brought so many. She's from a large family, and she brought them all to the United States, and she has helped every one of us. Praise the name of the Lord. A few years ago, maybe about 10 years ago, on Labor Day, my mother-in-law fell and broke her head. They had to put pins and screws in her head. She had to learn to walk all over again. Amen? And the following year, the same day, Labor Day, she fell again in the same place and broke the other hip. And that's why you see her in a wheelchair today. Amen? But her faith has remained strong. Praise the name of the Lord. And so it was with the Apostle Paul. His faith was anchored in Jesus Christ. And so, church, let me just tell you again. In order for 2023 to end well, listen to me. It's not about how much you earn. It's not about how successful your business was. It's not about where you traveled. It's not about uh, you know, anything that you have achieved, the graduation and the new job. and It's not all about that church. The world will make you think. That's what it takes to live a life that's worth the living. That's what it takes to live a successful life. God told Joshua, Joshua, do not let this word depart from your lips. Amen? Meditate on it, Joshua. Do not turn to the left or to the right. And if you do this, you will have good success. Church, it's not the money. It's not the job. It's not the accomplishment. Thank God for those things, church. But we need to understand, really, what will it take to, for you to walk through these doors today and say, 2023 has ended up well for me. This has been a good year. Are you with me? What it's going to take, we have now until midnight. I want you to understand what it takes for you to be able to say, this year has ended up extremely well. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and some are going to say, here he goes again. Church, that's what it takes 
for your year, for each year of your life to end up well. Are you with me? See, church, some of the things we're chasing after in the long run does not mean a whole lot. Oh, come on, church. I mean, I want you to aspire. If you have a job, climb to the top of the ladder. Our God is a God who takes us higher. Oh, come on, church. Help me now. Amen. You have a business? Work hard at it. Praise the name of the Lord. You can make it in your business. I said with God on your side, you can make it in your business. Praise the name of the Lord. If you're in college, get that degree. Graduate high school, those of you in high school, get that degree. You're in a job, uh, you know, get involved in higher learning concerning your job. Amen? Figure out how you can become the boss. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just don't want you to think that it's when you accomplish these things that life is well with you. It doesn't work like that, church. It doesn't work like that. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there are those today, they're in agony. They have all the money. They got the best job. Are you with me? Wonderful family. The big house, the big car. They have it all, church. But they're so unhappy. Oh, am I telling you the truth today? Can I just talk to you today? Very unhappy. Praise the name of the Lord. One songwriter says, When peace like a river attended my way, when, help me somebody, sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Church, 2023 will end well for you if you can say it is well with my soul. Church, it's not how much money you have in the bank. How is it with your soul as we get ready to end this new year? How is it with your soul? Are you at peace? Are you at peace? Are you troubled by anything as we go into this new year? If you should die today, do you know where you'll spend eternity? Church, it's not well with you until you know where you'll spend eternity. Well, can we give the Lord a hand clap? And for those of you who stood up, and said earlier, Pastor, this year has not ended up well for me. Today, you can turn it around. I said, right now, you can turn it around. You don't have to end up 2023 lost. You don't have to say, I regret 2023. Worst year of my life. You don't have to say that. You can turn it around. And church, the decision that you will make, if you choose to make it, that will turn your life around and, and, and cause this year to end up extremely well, it's the same decision that will make your life end up well. Because the decision, if you will make it today to give your life to Jesus Christ, not only will 2023 end up well, but your life, church, will end up well. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm a bit heartbroken. Because I know after preaching this message and explaining to you in such a way, that some are still going to chase after the dollar, thinking that the dollar will cause them to have a good life. 
And some are going to look towards the material things to determine for them that they have lived a good life and that life is well with them. Don't fool yourself, church. There are many today who have achieved more than what you could even imagine. Much more what you have achieved. And life, they'll tell you, has not turned out well. Can you put the scripture back up for me? So here's the Apostle Paul. His life was in danger. And he writes these words. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. Amen. I go bound in the spirit. Church, it's when the Holy Spirit is directing and leading your life that your life ends up well. The Bible says, don't trust the arm of flesh. Help me, church, for the arm of flesh will fail you. He says, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, he would be imprisoned, church. There was a seat, there was a, 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 an emperor over Jerusalem by the name of Caesar Nero, one of the most cruelest of all the Caesars. Paul's life was in danger. He was in the church at the time. He was speaking to believers. He was at the church in Ephesus. And in a sense, he was giving a farewell message. Church, one day, there will be a farewell message for each and every one of us. Are you with me? Don't you ever think you're going to be in this world forever. Don't live your life thinking you're going to live forever. That's a big lie, church. Read the obituary every day in the newspaper. Are you with me? Life is fragile. I believe it's shorter now than at any other time. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of the violence. Because of the sicknesses and diseases that are so rampant. Are you with me? Because of the heart of man. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Out of the heart of man comes lies, evil thoughts, murders, and adultery. The heart of man is desperately wicked, church. We're in a world that's upside down. We're in a world that's in chaos. The Bible says, let him who think he stands, look up. Look up. Every now and again, you need to look up. For our day of redemption draweth nigh. Church, there's danger all around us. Are you with me? And you need to understand the times in which you're living. You need to know what's happening in the world. You cannot disconnect yourself from what's happening in the world, church. Destruction can come your way at any time. You travel the highway, you'll see people in accidents. Life-threatening injuries. Ask some of those who work in health care. How many times they have had to send a patient to the morgue. I don't want to be graphic, but it's real. 
It's a reality. Some are in the, in the church. They're shaking their heads because, Pastor, it's the truth. The Bible said it is promised every man wants to die. And after death comes the judgment. Don't ever think you're invincible as we go into this new year. Don't ever think what has happened to others can't happen to you. What you need to make sure is that if calamity comes your way, your life will end well. Are you with me? Your life will end well. And life ends well. when we have given our lives to Jesus Christ. Come on, church, help me with it. I said life ends well when you have given that life that God has given you. The life you have, God gave it to you. You need to stop and think about that. The life you have is a gift from God. You know, some folks think they gave themselves life because they have everything. No, you didn't. It's a gift from God. And that life belongs to God. And he's waiting for you to give your life back to him. Praise the name of the Lord. So I just want to uh, just awaken your conscience today. I want to stir your mind today and get you to focus on the reality of life. Praise the name of the Lord. What shall it profit a man? You have gained the whole world. Been there, done that. Own this, own that. And you're lost throughout eternity. If God should call you home, where will you spend your eternity? That, that's what makes a life end well. 2023 can end well for you. If you'll give your life to Jesus Christ now, and go through these waters of baptism. I know that God has spoken to several of you here today. I want, Pastor, I want 2023 to end well for me. Won't you stand? Won't you stand? I know you're here. It's been a rough year for you. It's been a difficult year. It doesn't have to end that way. It doesn't have to end that way. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Paul says, I go to Jerusalem bound, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Brothers and sisters, I wish I could tell you what will befall you in 2023, but I can't. There's no crystal ball for me to look through, and there are those who will be going to psychics, palm readers, and astrologers. Tonight, those, those parlors, those shops are going to be packed with people. Some will go to the Chinese restaurant. You won't get a seat in the Chinese restaurant tonight because they're all going for the fortune cookie. Amen? Because they want to know. What does 2024 hold? Praise God. Amen. You can have a bright 2024 if you'd give your life to Jesus Christ. Paul says, I don't know what will befall me. Next verse, please. We're going to wrap it up now. Next verse. Hallelujah. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide with me. 
none of us is immune from afflictions. Are you with me? None of us. You might have had a healthy 2023 and 2024 can become a nightmare. Are you with me? You could be here saying, Pastor, this is a good year. And 2024 can turn out to be the worst year of your life. Paul says, you know, I don't know what bonds and afflictions abide me. He knew what he was facing. And God wants you to know that tomorrow is not promised to you, church. God wants you to know that. God wants you to prepare yourself for the new year. Praise the name of the Lord. And start it out on the right track. Don't wait. Jesus says, if today you have heard my voice, harden not your heart. And I know the devil may be telling some of you, don't budge, don't move. Soon he's going to have to close his message and you go on your way. Next year is going to be a better year than this year. The devil is a liar. Amen. The devil is a liar. Not because someone says happy new year means that you're going to have a happy new year, church. You know that, right? I mean, sometimes happy new year. Tonight, happy new year. And we have not shared anything to help that person have a happy new year. Today, I've shared with you all that you need so that you can have a happy new year. The question is, will, will you receive? Will you receive? We thank you for your word. We thank you for the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We recognize that what people need is to hear the good news. We thank you for the response to the gospel message today. We have a Lord, we have a Savior, and his name is Christ the Lord. And if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved and our household. And so, God, we thank you for these two lives that have now been ushered into your kingdom. They will be seeking, they'll be searching. They'll be asking, they'll be knocking. We thank you that those who seek you find you. Those who ask, receive. And those who knock, doors are open. Open doors for them, oh God. I pray that as a church family, we'll encourage the new believers and the new converts. And that we'll help them. We'll congratulate them and we'll encourage them. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for how this year is ending up for many of us in this house today because our faith is strong and our faith is secure in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for the wonderful things you have done in our church this year and what you're going to do on next year. Ask that you bless the service tonight as we gather, Lord, to go into the new year anchored in Christ. Thank you for all the great things that's going to come our way because you have good things in store for your children and we are the children of God. Come on, lift your hand and say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Because you're a child of God, God has great things in store for those who love him. And we thank you for that truth 
in Jesus name. Amen. Shout praise the Lord. We hope you'll worship with us again next week right here on live stream at 10 a.m. Spring of Water, changing lives for the better.